I look out in the crowd and I see so many of you that uh, I've seen at other events where I've spoken and I think, oh wow, I'm about to repeat myself, but I do that all the time because what happened to my child is not an isolated case. This is happening all over. And as we said earlier, California is in fact the most progressive state in the country. We are the capital. And right here, my son was a victim of a peer abuse driven bully side. The fact that you can systematically dismantle someone's life and it goes unpunished, unrecognized, the silence is deafening. When I think about my child was left to flounder with adult-like problems. He reported it. He went to his counselors on three separate occasions. He had a confirmed appointment with the vice principal. Michael showed up to the appointment and he was stood up. He circled back around to his teachers and his fourth period teacher where all hell broke loose on a daily basis for my child. Her advice was to ignore it. Now, when you hear these, it'll be five years this September. I think, okay, not one of those by itself is a standout thing. But together, when you can, in our schools, hallways, in campuses, in classrooms, scream out the word faggot. When you can use sexually explicit terms in the most degrading manner in front of the people who are charged with your well-being and no one says anything, the silence it is the silence that is killing our children. My son trusted the very people. He believed them when they said, hey, you have a problem, we are here for you. Who he didn't come home and tell was his dad and I. The very people who loved him the most. We are the people whose souls cry. For two years I remained silent, locked in the most horrific pain. I don't know if anyone can imagine what it is like to watch your child take their last breaths of life on the very day that 17 years prior you gave him life. I held my son as he took his first, first breaths of life. I held him as he took his last. No one cared. When we went to school with all the proof, the printouts of the text messages where my child begged and pleaded to be left alone where he tried to explain all the stuff, what it meant. First of all, who in the hell has to stand around and explain who they are to be accepted? I mean, I can tell you not once in my entire life have I ever had to do that. And it is a crime against our children, our youth, each other, that we expect anyone to offer up an explanation to who they are. We took all of this so-called proof expecting that, okay, now that we have it, now that we know why he shot himself on his 17th birthday in the boys' bathroom, someone will do something. A straight A on a roll, articulate, stand out, exceptional, slightly spoiled, but exceptional 
young man. Instead, I was faced with, Lisa, what in the world do you hope to accomplish by dragging in another student? Nothing will bring Michael back. I wrote those words down on my steno pad, and I thought, my God, my child broke in the most public way a human can break, and no one cares. So for two years, I remained silent. And I realized that silence gives consent. It gives people permission to abuse, to harass, to intimidate, to, to destroy. I kept waiting. I kept say telling my husband, what's it going to take? My God, kids are dying. The year 2010, seven boys in the month of September died by bully side. Seven. My husband and I, we were on our way down the coast to San Diego. We stopped to release balloons and toss roses into the ocean. This is the same place that for years we took our family pictures on vacation. We stood there where two and a half years prior, I had all my kids, my nieces, my nephews, if I only knew what the future held. Climbed back in the car and I said to Bob, my God, what's it gonna take? No one is doing anything, nothing. And my husband said to me, why don't you do something? And I thought, my God, I don't even leave the house these days. How in the world am I going to do anything? And at that, again, my very quiet husband, who is at home, <laughs> he said, who better than a mother who has lost so much? And what we do now with our nonprofit is I am my son's voice. And as I tell the world, you might have silent, silenced a 16-year-old child but you will not silence a 51-year-old empowered woman. I will speak out until the rest of my life, until our kids can walk down the hallways with the same sense of safety and security that every other child gets. When I have teachers tell me Hey, Lisa, my God, you know, we're, well, overworked. Okay, yeah, well, so am I, and so are you. We're immune to it. I don't know what's worse, to say you didn't hear it, you don't know it, or you're just immune to the suffering. It offends me. It offends me to the depths of my being that pain, we can become immune to it. There are school systems that are trying so hard to make a change. I am very proud to say I have a wonderful working relationship with Sacramento City Unified. And the irony of it is, I don't even live in that part of town. My kids didn't go to school there. I didn't grow up there. I grew up out in Carmichael where I raised my family. But you have to start somewhere. And it does start. It starts with me. It starts with you. It starts with young people who are willing to stand up here and call other concerned adults and ask, what. What is it going to take? My battle cry is say something, do something. My son said something and no one did anything. So, you know, I run around the state and they always say to me, oh my gosh, you're kind of passionate. And after a while I think, whoa, is that code? I mean, really, what are you trying to tell me? 
we are fighting a battle. And it is not getting any easier. Our children feel that they have no place to go. We are responsible for each other. We are connected. And we need to teach our kids, the bystanders, the majority of people who do nothing. We need to teach them that more ties us together than separates us. We cannot continue to look out and classify and to judge and to make assumptions based on physical characteristics. It is what we carry inside that says everything about us. Children, they are God's greatest blessing, regardless of what your individual faith is. My greatest accomplishments in this life were not my career, not my degrees, not how much money I made. It was my family. It was those little boys that called me mom. I savored every moment of it. And I would not wish on anyone the pain, the disheartening pain. So when I see exceptional young adults rallying the troops in an attempt to get the attention of the adults who, are, who have the power to make a difference. We all have a responsibility to heed the call. And I commend all of you for putting this on tonight. And thank you for including me. Thank you.